Today we're looking at tree growth comparison between different trees planted in different ways over the last six years on this homestead. More specifically, we will be comparing irrigated versus non-irrigated versus swale planted trees. And I think some of the outcomes are really interesting. Hi, I'm Amanda and if you're new here, welcome to Rockpile. My husband and I are 100% off grid on 100 acres in the wheat belt of WA and we are building our homestead from scratch. These trees behind me here are the first ones we ever planted and that was when we first bought the place in 2018. These are what's commonly known as lily pilly trees, it's a native here in Australia. We planted these trees before we moved here, there was literally nothing else here. And how we watered them was that we used a gravity drip system because it was low pressure and it was just using kind of head pressure from a couple of stacked IBCs and because we weren't here, we had that watering system on a timer, a Holman low pressure timer. That did good. It kept them alive, but I feel like it didn't really make them thrive. Now, six years later, they're on the same irrigation system as our orchard, and they're really starting to get some significant growth. <coughs> Thanks, Red. Now, while their lily pilly produces fruit, technically, the mulberry trees were our first dedicated fruit trees we planted on this property. We had two, both the same size, planted them in two different places. This one here is out in our orchard, and we've got an early video that actually shows how big it was at around like the 2020 mark. Let's take a good look at the size of this tree because I'm gonna show you the size of the other one we planted at the same time. Have a close up look at the fruits here. Just looking at the sizes of them. Make a mental note for when we have a look at this next tree as well. Now have a look at this one. Bought the same time, planted the same time. This one, easily twice as wide. And look at the fruit, so much more fruit. You've got to say the difference is significant. Okay, so let's compare some things between those two mulberry trees that might have made the difference between how they've grown. We've established that they were bought at the same time, at the time we bought them they were the same size, and we planted them here at the same time. Those initial years from when we planted them, which, was, which I think was about 2019 through to 2020, when we weren't living here, they were both getting just that drip-fed irrigation. But once we moved here and planted more fruit trees in the orchard and set up a more permanent irrigation, this tree wasn't on that loop. So this tree hasn't been getting irrigated at the same rate as all the trees in our fruit tree orchard. So that irrigation through summer will water them uh, once a day coming into summer, then at the peak of summer, it'll be twice a day for about 30 minutes. So that's what that other mulberry tree is getting watered. This one isn't. What we'll do with this one, we'll just set up a hose, we'll give it deep water um, every couple of days during the heat of summer. And it's going bonkers right? Um, another difference is that where we planted this one was actually kind of built up fill, fill dirt. There's probably a lot of like topsoil and organic matter in there, whereas the other tree was basically like a hole dug in the middle of a paddock. Yeah, we, we put stuff in there prior to planting it, but um, this one here I think has a lot more organic matter and nutrients in the soil that it's actually drawing from, even though it's not getting as much water. And you can see that it has made an incredible difference compared to the other mulberry tree. Even other than the size, the fruit production alone is so much more abundant on this tree. In 2020, we planted out our olive grove. And if you caught up with us on our most recent project management video, you would see that we're actually planning to install like a gravity fed drip irrigation system just to maximize all the little olives that are popping up on the trees. So here I am reporting live from the, uh, from the drip irrigation system for the olives for our summer to come. Let's run through it. I was going to use an IBC, but I remembered we had this tank, a 700 litre poly tank, just coming down to a standard valve, 25 mil fitting. This is my own little concoction here. It's a bit of 90 mil stormwater end cap sections with two caps, and that's actually full of 
uh, those green scourer pads that you like clean your dishes with. So I cut them into a circle and filled it in there because that's a very good filter, works well. Because the drippers, the slightest little bit of stuff will like clog the dripper. So I can clean that out, no problems. And then we just ran, I had this hooked up for 25 mil poly, but now I've just gone down to 19. And we've just done a whole array of 19 mil poly pipe on the surface. I'll just turn it on. So it is just gravity fed drip system. So it'll start from filling up from the bottom because we're on quite a bit of a hill here. It'll start filling up from the bottom and just working its way back up to the top. And our plan is to use the firefighter, which is over there currently filling up. Um, and we'll just fill this once a week and just let it drain out the whole the whole tank and I think that'll be well that's more water than they've ever gotten in the last four years <laughs> so let's go down the bottom here and we're down the bottom all right I'll just take a few minutes for the all the hose to fill up with water and whatnot but basically every tree has a a dripper now the drippers I used uh, we'll put a picture in just here I didn't use your normal like two liter or four liter an hour dripper because the hole in them is so tiny that literally like an ant fart would like clog it so these are I think zero to 30 liters a minute they're capable of or 30 liters an hour sorry and I chose these because I can unscrew the top all right without getting wet and I can clean them out so if I need to I can uh, put a little toothpick or something down there and just clean out the hole so you can see how much water we got going on the tighter you wind them down the less water that comes out so I also went them because of the hill we're on I wanted to get less water down the bottom and more water up the top because of the way just it's gravity you know so more water is going to flow down the bottom here and now back to regular programming thank you for joining me This is where we're going to start seeing some pretty dramatic differences. This along here is our ditch. It's built similar to how you would build a swale, but it's not on contour. It basically runs down along our driveway, directing water away from our driveway and into a swale at the bottom of the ditch. We planted this out in 2021 with tube stock, so like tiny little plants. And this is three years growth. And check out the size of this tree here. This is an Acacia lesiocalyx. So just make a mental note of the size of this tree because we've got a really cool comparison later on. Now the trees along this ditch were irrigated using a gravity drip feed system. The way we set that up is we stacked two IBCs at the top of the ditch. Remember I said it wasn't on contour, so there was a slope. So we did it at the top of the ditch. We did two IBCs on top of each other just so we can get like that extra bit of head pressure. So originally we just had drippers on each of the trees. We had like two liter an hour drippers. We upped those to four liters an hour. And those first initial years of watering establish these trees really well but we didn't plant all of the trees from that same tube stock batch along this ditch check this little guy out same tube stock planted at the same time not irrigated at all ever what a difference just that irrigation over the first two summer seasons of those trees and shrubs on the ditch versus this one we have had a couple that's had better growth and I'll show you them in a second. Um, other things to consider here is that they're planted behind me. You can see uh, a gum tree. So they're planted under gums. They've got larger trees around them that will probably be taking nutrients from them. They're not planted on a ditch that is made to like capture and divert water. Even though the ditch is not on contour, the trees there probably have a greater water and nutrient reserve to tap into. But wow, big difference, right? So that's that tree I was just showing you, a dose of comparison. This one is slightly bigger, and this is probably the best performing tree from that tube stock batch that is not in the ditch. Another 2021 planting are these Leptospermum trees. Barely see it, just tucked down. Thanks, Dozer. 
tucked in there, one there, another one there, and there. Not irrigated, and again, they're under some gum trees, so they're probably competing for nutrients. Now, let's compare these to these guys here. Look at them, they're going nuts. Same tube stock, planted at the same time, same tree. How much more growth is that? It's massive. So each one of these were planted at the end of our original veggie patch rows in the early days these were getting irrigated at the same frequency as our veggies like a couple of times a day not only that just off to camera right Corey had like a fertilizer tea like a sheep poo tea fertilizer set up that frequently overflowed and would soak down into the ground coming down into the passion fruit which is why passion fruit is going so well and these trees here in addition to that we've also got the shade house which is helping protect these guys during our harsh summers. The final tree growth comparison I want to show you is over on the swale and then I want to chat to you about the three main learnings I feel that we've taken away from our last six years of growing trees in a variety of different ways on our homestead. Swales are commonly known as very effective tree growing systems. And the reason why that is, is because it's on contour, water catchment comes down and is captured and distributed evenly along the swale, driving that water deep. So it really aids in water retention. As the water is absorbed, the swales encourage the buildup of organic matter in the soil that the trees planted along the berm can then draw on. They provide an element of erosion control, as the pioneer trees and vegetation you plant along your uh, the berm part of the swale grow, they create microclimates and protections for longer lived trees, sort of fruit and nut trees, and they increase water availability and enrichment along the berm actually encourages really deep root systems. We built this swale in 2022 and we planted it out with some pioneer nitrogen fixing plants in 2022 also. This swale has never been irrigated. This first part of the swale here, Corey has started to kind of whip a snip that cover crop vegetation down. So we've got some good mulch on the berm for summer. These ones here are an, a triplex, which is a salt bush plant uh, just to help stabilize the berm. Also edible. This here is one of our trees. Looks like it's been a little bit hammered. So this is Acacia lesiocalyx. You can tell by these like long leaves. Got some of the lower shrubs, trees. This one's going quite well. Comparison, it's about my size. I'm like five foot six and maybe a little bit. Got some more shrubs growing through there. Another acacia, another shrub. We've got an acacia acumata there or otherwise known as a jam tree. And we've got another little tree there. Oh, look, got quite a decent sized salt bush in the back there. Cute. The Aussie life in Kookaburra. I'll just wait till they're finished. Now look, I know the trees on this swale aren't the biggest we've got, but what's impressive about the results of this swale system, they've had zero irrigation. They're really well established, much larger than comparable shrubs and trees that were planted a year earlier, remarkably different, two, three, four times the size. And I think that really speaks to the benefits that I was mentioning earlier of planting on swales. And that's why they're such good tree growing systems. I will say that in the couple of years since we planted them out on this swale, we've had a couple of really dry years. Like our dam hasn't even filled up. And I imagine that if we had the amount of rainfall that we usually get in those couple of years coming into the swale and soaking down into the ground, this growth would have been exponentially greater. And even as is, I think they're looking great. Now, if we're talking takeaways, that might be useful for you on your homestead. Keep in mind that we are in a semi-arid climate, so your climate might be different. So your rainfall situation might be different, uh, but establishment watering over those first couple of summer seasons really made a big difference for us. Even if it's just like a simple gravity fed drip irrigation system, get water to those trees when they're young so they can get those roots down nice and deep. Planting trees that are suitable for your climate, our mulberry trees and our olive trees are both well suited to this climate and it's one of the reasons why they are going so well when we've lost other fruit trees like nectarines and some other ones. 
Finally, and perhaps most interestingly, is the question about whether or not tree growth is about the water at all. Maybe not at all. Maybe like it's not all about the water. How and where we've planted our trees and what nutrients they can draw on can mean more than any sort of watering system you can apply to it. And if you want to try using a swale as a tree growing system, we've got a video of how we constructed ours here that you might find interesting. See you next time. Bye guys.